Hi there, this is my fifth video about the Robo Sapien version 1. This is to look at the electronics and how some of the circuits work. Basically what we've got is our PCB board with lots of surface mounted components, resistors, transistors and capacitors and some capacitors that are through hole capacitors, large electrolytics for doing a nice lot of smoothing. Can I just take that? Come on, let go, thank you. Uh, so what we have then are those components. If we look at the center of the thing here, uh, first of all, we've got this U3, which is a motor driver chip. Now we're very fortunate that uh, a guy called Mark CRA on his blog has given us the pinout for this particular motor driver chip. Find this quite interesting in as much as it tells you where the motors are, which are the connections to the motors. It has a 6 volt in on pin 27 and a 0 volt on pin 37. A lot of the pins just connect basically to the brain. It happens to be labelled as a TB6591FL chip, which I can't find much about. Farnell seemed to have a motor driver chip of that number made by Toshiba. But I think it, rather than being a 40 pin, it's a 48 pin. So, I'm not too sure about that. I uh, definitely can't find any more details on it. If we go back to the board then from our motor driver chip, if we look on the back of the board, what we have is the brain. It just seems that the one thing on the back is this brain. It's under a blob so that we can't disassemble it or know what it's about. And that is actually mounted onto its own circuit board, which is then soldered onto this circuit board. We've got a lot of nice little indicators as to what's going on. So here for example we have the motors. Motor 6 is that one. Motor 2 up here. Motor 4 over here. And motor 7 here. And motor 5 here. That's quite interesting but doesn't really help me much. Uh, and then we've got the speaker. And then we've got all these test points. Whoops. Uh, got all these test points around, which once again are very interesting, but don't really help me to know what's going on. If we look then at the chip pinout, which once again kindly from Mark, we can see uh, it has... Uh, 40 pins again and that it and that it what let's find a pointer again lost my pointer no point in that uh, that this then is the sort of brain behind the device if we look at the pins uh, one to three then are the ones that go to the no one one goes to the left hand I think it is uh, this one goes to the right hand so then we've got six that go to the eyes pin four it looks like is the three volts three that comes out and goes to the eyes we've then got inputs from the shoulders here down here we've got an oscillator on this the oscillator on this particular one happens to be a ceramic oscillator there uh, and that has a couple of capacitors that connect it to naught volts. Uh, if we look at uh, Mark's diagram for this, he shows us, well, uh, this component and then the two naught volts. So the outputs 17 and 18 go to the, in my particular case, the ceramic oscillator, although it could be. I've seen some with crystal oscillators on them. Presumably the ceramic's cheaper. So that's then is the 
two main chips that are on it just while we're talking about it we might as well talk about this one here probably can't see it but that seems to be a 7533 which I assume is the 3 volt oscillator if we have a look then at the sockets that go around if we start down here at the bottom we can look at the feet sockets maybe uh, best way to look at that is on the diagram so here we have oops better if I put it the right way up wouldn't it uh, so here we have the two sockets that go down to the feet these have 3 volt 3 going out and then another one coming back in which comes from the switches at the back and front of the feet they're connected in parallel so it only gets one signal back and that also is combined with the signal from the finger so it only gets one input from the left hand side and one input from the right hand side as it were also in the feet then we've got the uh, two batteries the battery two cells two d cells gives us three volts that comes then back up this purple wire goes through the circuit board and then back down to the other leg through this grey wire that then goes through the cells and then back up here as a note volt it's also got the other foot switch on it there this 6 volts then goes straight to the switch here comes down to this double pole double throw switch which uh, I found difficult to work out what was going on but eventually managed to think to suss it so the 6 volts when it's switched on the 6 volts comes down here goes into the circuit board and also to the speaker and also to this top connector here so that this green line comes is also 6 volts that comes along and that's what goes into the voltage regulator when it's switched off which is an interesting point then there are two brown wires and I suspect that these then are there to discharge the capacitors uh, in the on the circuit board uh, this one at this side just goes through a single 50 ohm resistor down but this one has a diode on it as well so I assume that might be something to do with back EMF or something like that I uh, don't really understand it but that seems to make sense if we come up the side we've got the and elbow connector there's this leg connector as well but this is the one that we're interested in it has three of its white eight wires are all 3 volts 3 which seems a bit of a waste to me whether it's for some sort of uh, what protection some sort of avoiding uh, spikes I'm no idea but definitely if I want to connect something onto the hand elbow I could use this 8 pin connector and just use one 3 volt 3 wire and then use the other two for something I wanted to do uh, there's a motor position switch in the hand elbow which tells it when the motor is sort of in the middle position a finger switch which is connected as we said already to the foot switches and an LED which gives out uh, brightness to show us where the hand is or it can point at something and finally we've got the elbow uh, hand motor up at the top we have the shoulder position switch so just again just the motor and then the 3 volts 3 goes to the switch to tell it when it's in the middle position here we've got the microphone the microphone is quite interesting in its circuit in as much as if I can look at the circuits again from Mark uh, what I find is that the microphone and the infrared have the similar sort of circuit before them to switch them on he's just drawn it as uh, the blocks like the transistors appear the surface mounted transistors appear but if we look at the circuit diagram then I've drawn it the other way around but essentially it comes in 
through this resistor switches on this PNP this MPN transistor sorry I'm getting muddled again N NPN transistor that in turn then allows a current to flow through this PNP transistor switching this on and this is what then supplies the power uh, in the top case here to the infrared uh, yeah, receiver and in this case to the microphone which is over here so they can switch them both off to save power if we have a look at the microphone circuit uh, this seems uh, we have the 3 volts 3 which is switched on by this as I said before to give us the voltage to the microphone, a couple of capacitors to smooth it, uh, a resistor to pull the microphone high and that then goes out through this capacitor. This transistor here, Q4, uh, due to this resistor here would normally be on, the current would flow around that way, that would leave that on. When that's on then that will be supplying a high voltage onto this one and therefore this PNP transistor will be switched off. If this then switches off your Q4, it will supply a voltage to Q5 which will switch it on and send an output to the brain, pin 9, to tell it that the microphone has received a signal. So that's the microphone as I see it. The next thing across we need to look at the head. The head has six LEDs, the three on each eye. They are quite interesting in themselves because I hadn't realised that they actually signal what's going on. Um, when, we, they, when it started, they just have the three LEDs there, there and there. But it can signal things like when it's angry, so it has the top two on. And when it's asleep, it has the bottom two on. It does other things for other sort of indications. But I'd not actually noticed that. A bit lapse of me. At the other side, we have the other shoulder, the other elbow hand, which are more or less the same, and then the leg motors. So that essentially is the circuit as I see it. I think I've covered everything about it so the next thing I want to do is to look at uh, this information it's a uh, from it's a paper about using the Robo Sapien in a university to uh, educate uh, students so they can have a look at the Robo Sapien try and replace its uh, its what its brain with another CPU and see if they can control it and build up uh, propositions. Here they've produced uh, an output which shows that the that's the output from the micro and that's the motor input. Uh, I'm confused why this keeps going on and off. I'm not too sure whether it's uh, pulse width modulation or not. So they can move the motor a little bit slowly and then move it fast and then move it slowly again, which would make a lot of sense. Here again, they've produced the seven motors when it actually says, oops. Uh, and once again, we seem to have what would look like pulse width modulation on motor 3 there and then motor 3 the other way, motor 1 one way and motor 1 the other way and similarly down here and yet here on motor 2 and motor 4 there they seem to be a lot further spaced apart. So that would be an interesting thing to look at to put up a logic analyzer to actually see if it does use pulse width modulation so yeah it's great a lot of the stuff that was on the internet seems to be have gone once we start looking at references we find that they've disappeared so unfortunately I can't find too much about it so I've had to go through myself and have a look and see what I can find being fascinating to do 
once again I've really enjoyed it so that's it for now so it's bye now bye <laughs>